So you're using Slack at home or at work and you want to build a bot for it. You checked out some of the other bots that are out there, but none of them quite do what you want them to do. So if you're running Slack and want to build your own bot and maybe learn a little bit of JavaScript along the way, join me as we build a Slack bot in JavaScript in just a few minutes. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about building your own Slack bot in JavaScript. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you want to continue the conversation about Slack bots there, we can. So let's talk about building a bot for Slack. So if you aren't familiar with Slack, Slack is a communication tool. It allows you to chat and IM, do video calls, and also do voice calls. It's used by a lot of small businesses and a lot of large ones too. And I even use it for personal use, for a monitoring tool for all of my services. Now, I don't need to go into detail as to why you would use something like Slack, but it's a great chat communication tool. And if you want to customize Slack a little bit more than just what they give you, you can build your own bot to reply to custom commands, commands that you want to listen for and you want to execute. So today, in this video, we're going to build a Slack bot. We're going to start with nothing and end with a bot that you can add to your own server today. And you can continue to add features to this bot as time goes on. Now I'm making this bot open source too, so look for the documentation links in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So with that out of the way, let's hop right in. The first thing we'll do is go out to slack.com. Once there, you'll sign into your workspace if you have one. If not, let's create one. So we're going to create a new workspace, then we'll name our workspace. So let's name ours Techno Tim. This next step is really just creating a channel, so we'll call it coding. Next, we won't invite anybody to this workspace, and now we can see our workspace in Slack. Then you can sign into the Slack app. Next, we'll actually need to create an app for our bot. Okay, so we'll go out to the Slack API. Here's where things differ a little bit. So we're gonna actually create a classic app, and you don't need to worry too much about this, but this is the only way that I've found to create a Slack bot that listens on WebSockets. Now the alternative is building out an API that accepts webhooks, but that's a lot of infrastructure just to listen to chat messages. So Slack recommends creating a classic app if you wanna connect on a WebSocket. This will really simplify creating our app. So we'll actually wanna go out to the classic apps page. And so let's create one here. So I'm gonna name it Techno Bato. Let's choose our workspace, create app. And so we've already created our app or our bot. So let's add some features to our app. So we'll expand add features and functionality, then we'll choose bots. And here I'm gonna choose add legacy bot user. Choose our bot display name, Technobato. The username's gonna be the same, and we'll add. Next we'll install this app to our workspace. Install app to workspace, click allow. And now our bot's added to our workspace. So this app credentials section, you should keep private. Treat all of this like a secret that you wouldn't want anyone to see. I'm showing you mine now for the sake of this tutorial, but you would never show anyone this page. Plus, I'm gonna delete all this when I'm done. And then if you scroll down to display information, we can customize our bot here. So I'm gonna give them a description, a helpful. Then we can give our bot an icon. We can choose a background color for it. Then we'll save our changes. Okay, now that we have our bot created in Slack, let's start writing some code. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a directory for our bot. Once we're in here, let's initialize a package.json. So npm init, package name, yes, version. We'll start with 0, dot zero, dot 0. Description, a helpful Slack bot. Entry point, we'll say okay for now. We'll change this later. Test command, no test for now. Git repository, none for now. Keywords, none, author, techno, then license, sure. This okay? Yes. Okay, so let's launch VS Code. Okay, so I wanted to call this out really quick. You'll need to have your environment set up to do JavaScript development. If you need help with this, I've got a guide on how to configure your machine for JavaScript development. It will walk you through setting up your machine so that you can develop JavaScript. It'll have you up and going in just a couple of minutes. I highly recommend checking that out if you get any errors along the way. Okay, so let's get back to this. So here we'll want to create a folder, a source folder to house our code. And here we'll want to create an index.js. And let's create an app.js. So now we'll need to install some dependencies. The first one I'm going to install is ESM. This allows us to use ES6 imports. So yarn add ESM. Next, we're going to install one of the Slack clients. Slack has many different clients depending on how you want to interact with their services. This first one we're going to install is the RTM API. So the RTM API is for real-time messaging. 
basically a way to open up a WebSocket and listen for messages. So let's add that with yarn add at Slack RTM API. This is a scoped package. The next we're going to install is the actual Slack web API. So the web API gives you an HTTP client that we can interact with Slack in a RESTful way. So this allows us to get resources and post resources. We'll use it to post messages. So we'll do yarn add add Slack web API. Okay, they're both added. Let's go back to VS Code. Let's look in our package.json. And here you'll see the three dependencies we just added. In order to use ESM, we need to do something like this in our index.js. So we need to require our ESM and then export our app.js. Once we do that, we can use ES6 imports instead of using require everywhere. Now that's just a personal preference for me from doing front-end development like React.js, but you're free to use requires if you want to. Okay, so in our app.js, the first thing we're gonna do is import our RTM client. This is our real-time messaging client so that we can subscribe to events from Slack. Then we need to initialize our client and we need to do that with a token. So let's go back out to the Slack API where our app was and get our token. So if you go back out to your Slack app and then go to add features and functionality and then go to permissions, once we see our tokens here, you'll want to copy this one, bot user OAuth access token. So copy that out. And remember, these are secrets. And while we're at it, let's create a constants file to tuck this away. So we'll export const slack OAuth token with our token. And also, you should probably use an environment variable or something else to keep this secret, but we'll keep it in here for the sake of this demonstration. Okay, so we'll import the token and we'll pass it into the client. And now that we have that, let's actually subscribe to an event. So let's subscribe to the ready event. And on this ready event, we're gonna just console log out that the bot started. Okay, a couple things we'll need to change in our packets.json. So first let's change our main. So our entry point isn't index.js anymore. It's just source. And then we'll just need to add our start script, which is just gonna run node. Okay, and so now that we have that done, let's actually add our start. So this is where we actually start the client. Then we'll add a catch to log out the error if we get an error. Okay, after we add that, we should be able to start our bot up. So let's go back into our terminal and do yarn start. We start it and we got a console log on bot started. So that means we're right in here. So our bot is ready. And the cool thing is if you go into your Slack app, you should see in your apps that your bot is online. So now our bot is online and connected to our Slack server. Okay, before we make things too complicated, let's just send a simple message from our bot. So as I mentioned before, we use the RTM client to subscribe to events, but sending out a message isn't subscribing to an event. So we need to use their web API. So here, we'll need to import the web client and then we'll need to new up a web client with that same token. So in order to send a message, I created this really quick helper function. So this function is called send message and it sends a message. It takes a channel and a message and then it calls our web client chat post message and then it's passing in the channel and text of message. And we can actually do shorthand here, but I'll keep it to be less confusing. And so now that we have that function, we can use it. Let's do send message. Let's send it to the general channel and let's send a message just saying the bot is online. Let's clean this up. Let's stop our old bot, start our new. And here we go. We started up the bot and now the bot is saying in our general channel, bot online. So this is working pretty good. But let's change this. Let's create a new channel. We don't want our bot to spam general every time it comes online. So let's create a channel called bot spam. A channel for bot spam. Okay, and this channel can be called anything you want it to be. I'm just creating one channel dedicated to all of our bot spam, something like automated messages. Okay, so we would go back in our code and let's change the channel to bot spam. Save it, dart our bot back up, and here it goes, bot online in our bot spam channel, but not in our general. This is the one from earlier, but I'll clean it up so it's less confusing. And then let's move this to our constants file so that we can configure it easier later. So let's export const bot spam channel. And you can change this to any channel you have. Just remember to actually create this channel and then update it here. Okay, so let's import it and then we'll use it here. Should be able to start it again and see another message. Okay, that's working pretty good. Let's do one more thing to our bot when he comes online. So something I like to do when the bot comes online is just print out the version that the bot's running on. So we'll do this. Const package.json equals require 
package.json. So what we're doing is requiring our package.json and then from our package.json, we're gonna use the version property to echo out when the bot starts up. So let's say bot version package.json.version is online. And so if we look at our package.json, it's just gonna echo out this version. And that should be incremented when you tag and deploy your bot. Okay, so let's start it again. There we go, bot version 0.0.0, .0 is online. So as you increment your bot, you should tag it with a new version and increase this version on your package.json. Then when it comes online, you'll know what version of the bot you're using. If not, you can just delete that piece anyway. Okay, so now that we have that running, let's hook into our events so that we can listen for commands and act on them. So really quickly, I'm gonna add a command like hello. And when the bot sees the command hello, it's gonna respond with hey ya and then the username. Now I'm gonna follow a bot pattern command, exclamation point hello. This is similar to other chat clients that are out there. But for the record, this will not be a slash command. I think that slash commands require APIs and webhooks, and that's a lot of infrastructure to build just for a simple bot. So I think it'll go something like this. So first we wanna to subscribe to the slack underscore event event. In that callback, we'll get an event type and an event. And so just to check to see if this is working, let's log out the event type and the actual event. So let's start our bot back up. Let's go into general. Let's type hi. And you might see some stuff on the left. Those are system notifications or system events from Slack, ping and a pong, going back and forth to make sure the WebSocket's still open. But we're not seeing any of my messages. And I figured out that that's because we haven't invited the bot to this channel. Now we see him listed as an app, but he's not actually in this channel. It's just me by myself. So to invite him, let's just add him. So we'll do at Technobato. Let's invite him to the channel. Now he's in the channel. You'll see a lot of events fire, especially their, their famous knock brush MP3 sound that you hear. Now let's type hi. There we go. So we had a message of hi from this user in this channel. And so we're seeing IDs here, but that's okay. You could even see when you press each keystroke, we're seeing a user typing event. And there it goes. Okay, so now that this is working, let's add some logic. First, let's do some null checking. If event and an event dot type equals 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 message. So here we're checking to see that we have an event and we're checking to make sure that the event type is a message. So we don't want typing messages or system messages. We only want the type message. Now let's check the contents of that message. So if event dot text equals 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 hi get rid of these console logs so it's not so noisy. Let's go back to our bot, start it back up. Type hi, nothing happened. Exclamation point hi. There we go. And we got a hi in our console. So that means we're inside of that block. So here we mentioned we wanted to have the command hi or hello. And if someone used that command, we were actually gonna say hello back. So let's actually just change this to hello. And let's create a really quick function called hello. So this function is actually gonna take a channel ID. Then we're gonna send a message to that channel. Then we're gonna say the message up, hey yeah. Here we're gonna call the function hello and we're gonna pass in a channel ID. So what's our channel ID? Well, if we look in our logs, we can see that our channel ID is right here. This was the channel that someone typed it in. Now it's not a good idea to use general or bot spam for this because we wanna respond back in the channel that they sent the message on. So this looks like it's hanging off event.channel. So let's add that. Okay, let's start our bot back up and let's use the command hello. And our bot says, hey ya. Now this should work in any channel too. So let's go into random, which we've never typed in. Say hello, and it didn't work. That's because we didn't add the bot to this channel. So let's invite him. So now we invited him, so now he can listen on this channel. Just type in hello. There he goes, hey ya. Okay, now that we've got that working, we actually want to mention the person that said hello to us. So for this, we'll need a user ID. How do we get the user ID? Well, we have it in that event message. So let's go back and look at that. So if we see in this event, our user ID is right here. And that's not a username, but I'll show you how to mention someone from a user ID. So when we say hello, we're going to say event dot user and now hello is actually going to take another parameter which is user id 
And now here, when we call send message, we'll actually say angle bracket add user ID closing angle bracket. Okay, so what's going on here is that when this event fires, we have a user hanging off this event, and that's actually an ID. Then we're gonna call hello, and we're gonna pass in the channel ID, as well as the user ID. And here's how you mention someone by user ID. So it's angle bracket at, and then our user ID is a string, angle bracket. So let's give it a shot, yarn start, start our bot back up. Now we can say hello, and there we go. Our bot saying, hey, yeah, uh, Techno Tim. And this is actually a mention. And that's how easy it is to create a chat bot for Slack. We started out with nothing and ended up with a fully functional bot that you could add to your server today. And you can continue to expand upon this with new features. Now I'm making this bot open source so it'll be in my GitHub repo and you'll find links in the description below under documentation. I'd love to see a pull request for a feature that you find helpful or even just leaving it in the comments below. If you'd like to see a part two to this where we continue to expand this bot, you could also leave that in the comments below. And as a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. Am I getting him? Come on. Come on, am I getting him? Yeah. Yeah, I got him. Give me some repairs. I don't even want to get out to repair it because someone's totally going to... This was the worst, repairing and like having someone come steal your tank as you're repairing. I forgot all about this. Yes. Please do not steal my tank. Because I just took that other tank out.